Hi everybody and welcome to another video. My name is Richard Seidlitz, I'm the owner of redpants.lol and in this video I'm going to be talking about headlights. A little housekeeping before we begin, there are a couple things going on. First is that I'm recovering from a sinus infection, so if I sound a little stuffy or more ridiculous than usual, uh, I do apologize for that. And second is that a storm is rolling in right as I started filming, so if you hear anything going on outside, uh, some pangs of trees or uh, debris or small animals against the garage doors, uh, I apologize for that. That's not me, that is mother nature. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and talk about headlights. It's a weird thing to focus time and energy uh, to discuss headlights on a car, uh, especially in as much depth as we're about to do. However, it's an Aston Martin, sir. Um, this is one of those things that comes up fairly often for us owners. Uh, basically, I've made, I think, two or three videos about this topic already. Not just the headlights, but uh, I've made a video talking about the different lighting components on the exterior of the car. So the headlights, the taillights, the side repeaters, the corner markers, that stuff. Um, and then also another video that was about installing or replacing uh, taillights and another video that was about uh, repairing taillights that have condensation issues. I'll have links to all those in the description below and I also have a lot more information on redpants.lol. Like all my videos, I have a lot of supporting content on the website. So if it's not in the video, it may, uh, it may actually be on the website. Um, go ahead and check that out. Uh, again, more links in the description below. And if you're new here, uh, like, subscribe, send me a bottle of wine because that's the right thing to do. Anyway, with headlights, we have got the same issue that we have with the taillights. Uh, in that previous video I made about how to repair a taillight, I discussed condensation. In fact, I discuss it quite often because it's a very common problem. Uh, luckily for the headlights, it isn't as often that this will happen. Uh, for a lot of us, we don't necessarily, hold on, not, is there anything made of wood in here? Uh, stool, knock on wood. Uh, I haven't had this issue on either of my V8 Vantages uh, on the headlights. Uh, I have had other issues on my headlights, one of which I've left there to show uh, as a warning to others what happens if you peel that cover lens off. Uh, the That layer of vinyl can, if not done correctly, if not removed correctly, that layer of vinyl, if removed, can ruin a headlight, or at least the lens of it. Uh, it's something to keep in mind. That's why my car looks the way it does. I think I've talked about that before in that um, lighting video. Uh, but regardless, it's something to touch upon in this one because we're talking specifically about headlights. So the first, I was gonna say step one, but we're not doing steps right now. The first thing to know about the headlights is there is a piece of vinyl covering the lens. Do not remove it unless you know what you're doing and you do it properly or you can take the surface layer off of the lens and damage it. Yes, it should be repairable or at least it can be if it's not bad enough, but it's better to avoid the situation than to find yourself in it. So moving on, the other big issue that we need to talk about is condensation. Now, once again, just like the taillights, the headlights have a bunch of LEDs in them. Those turn signals and DRL bulbs are all LED diodes. And is that redundant like an ATM machine? Anyway, they're LEDs. And controlling those is a circuit board inside of the headlight. If moisture or condensation or lightning messes up that circuit board, then the LEDs will not be able to work because the control board will not be able to operate them. It looks like this when that happens. It can be intermittent, it can be constant. Regardless, that circuit board needs to be protected. Now, when it comes to condensation, there are a couple of ways that you can mitigate this. One is the factory method, which is to put silica packets inside of the headlight housing. That's right. According to at least one TSB, Technical Service Bulletin, uh, you should remove the bulbs from the back end to open up the rear side of the, uh, of the headlight, and then you can stick silica packets inside of there to absorb moisture to prevent condensation from building up. Yes, the same kind of silica packets you would find in a box of shoes. Hopefully you didn't eat those because now you can reuse them for your Aston Martin headlights. Um, so there's that. Uh, I've also heard of other products that uh, are basically vent kits. 
that are there to basically, uh, as far as I'm aware, they keep air circulating inside the headlight so that it doesn't allow condensation to build up. I've never used those. I don't have any information about them. Um, other companies make those. By all means, go ahead and look into those if that's something you're interested in doing. I'm sure there's information out there. But that is another option. And quite frankly, uh, it's a, a lot more, to me, it sounds like it's a lot more complicated, uh, but a much more elegant solution than silica packets. I just cannot get over that. But hey, it's, sorry, sorry, my British friends, but come on, you're asking for a joke to be made there. Uh, anyway, uh, with the condensation issues affecting headlights, there are some things that may be possible if you do encounter problems. So when I was over at ECPS, uh, was it last month, uh, we went over a bunch of stuff, one of which was headlights because they happened to have a set of headlights that they were in the process of refurbishing. And the refurbishing was that they were taking out these silver bezels and making them black. Now the black bezels did come as an option on some cars or it was standard on some cars, optional on others. But basically uh, it is something that Aston Martin did very briefly. I think the V12 Vantage S was the one that had that and maybe the V8 Vantage G GT uh, in the United States, I think also had that. But in my situation where I'm gonna be shipping a car overseas to a right-hand drive market, I need to prepare it for right-hand drive roads, which means my headlights need to point the opposite direction. If you didn't watch that video about the um, headlights, or excuse me, the exterior lighting, one of the things I mentioned is that the headlights are adjustable. You have a pair of adjustment screws, one goes up and down, one goes left and right for that headlight, and it's on the backside of each headlight. You open up the little access panel that's in the fender liner and you can see it right there. Uh, the thing though is that those only have so much adjustability and headlights do have a bias built into them for which way they are aiming, whether it's for left-hand drive or right-hand drive roads. The idea being that you don't wanna point headlights at oncoming traffic so they need to be biased slightly away from the center of the road. That allows you to see uh, what's on the side of the road, on the road, and not blind people on the opposite side of the road. But in that, uh, you know, with that limited adjustability, you can't take a set of left-hand drive headlights and point them hard enough, adjust them far enough to act as right-hand drive headlights. So what I have to do is I have to disassemble my headlights in order to swap a few components around. Now, luckily for me, when I was in Poland with ECPS, they actually had a set of headlights that were there disassembled, like I said, and so we talked a bit about them. Let's take a look at that. I've got a couple of headlights that are sitting here in various states of disassembly, and you can see they're not complete. The LED strips are missing from both. Uh, this one, you can see the LED uh, controller board right here. This is the part that really fails when you have an issue with the headlights. Um, I made another video that was talking about that, and that's the control board, so you can actually see it. Um, this one is in various states of disassembly because it's being refurbished, but I wanted to show you quickly how to do this. These covers sit on like this and they have these little clamps, these little clips that are all the way around them. So it's easy to spot where, there's are, where those are. However, the biggest issue is that this channel right here is filled with a sealant and you have to heat that up so that you can cut it to separate that before you can undo these clips and then pull this off. It's very, very time intensive, uh, but it can be done and I've seen people do this. Um, I'll be doing it myself. But once that's done, you have to clean all the original sealant out, which can take even more time. So it is labor intensive. But once you have this cover off, it's not that hard. There is one bolt hole right here that will allow you to remove the inside part. And then you have everything exposed on the inside. This is where that circuit board would be fixed right here with one screw or excuse me, two. And then you have this bolts that are around each of these bezels. Once you've taken those apart, you can refurbish them. You can do the left-hand drive to right-hand drive or vice versa conversion. And then you have to put it all together. Putting it together means you need to put new sealant in there and you want to make enough of it so that it holds everything together, but not so much that when you put it in, it all squishes out and gets everywhere. Uh, most of the time it's going to be hidden. When you look at this lens, this part right here is where that sealant's going to be, but it's also covered by the body panels by the fender. So you're not going to see it too much. It's better to have a little too much than a little too little. 
if that makes sense. It's better to have too much than too little. There we go. Uh, because if you don't have enough and, it's, and it leaks, you can have more of that condensation issue and everything else that can lead to the circuit boards burning up. Now, again, this is a very difficult thing to do, but it is something that's possible. Just be very careful because it's easy to damage the lenses and you cannot buy these components separately. You have to buy entire headlight assemblies if you want new ones. So having the headlight apart and cleaned like we just saw makes it look really easy, but it's not because it is actually pretty difficult to get all that disassembled and cleaned up with that sealant removed. A lot of work goes into that. It's a lot of time and elbow grease. Uh, so it may be something you wanna try because maybe uh, for a lot of people it is worth it because headlights are very expensive. Um, of course, prices are constantly changing and very drastically depending on what market you're in, tax rates, all this other stuff. But uh, for me, for example, I wanna say the last time I looked at a headlight, it was somewhere between uh, the retail and it was like $2,500 to $3,000 for a single headlight. So if it comes down to a little elbow grease uh, and a bunch of time versus a whole lot of money, for a lot of people, it's definitely worth giving it a shot to see if it can be repaired. On my own, like I said, I'm gonna be shipping my car overseas from the United States elsewhere, and I need to have right-hand drive headlights. So instead of buying new headlights, I can take mine apart, swap the internals around so that my left-hand drive headlights become right-hand drive headlights, and I'm gonna be turning mine black just like you've seen here. It's a really cool, aggressive look. It makes the black tie in with all the other black accents on the car instead of having just spots of silver when there are none anywhere else. Like I said, the, the, the work is a lot uh, of, of time and effort, but uh, it can cost you basically nothing except for that time and effort invested, unless you're paying somebody else to do it, and of course you have to pay for their time and effort. Uh, but hopefully you guys learned something from this video. Uh, there's the, the headlights themselves aren't terribly complicated as far as the way they're designed. I mean, it's a very elegant and pretty headlight, but of course for those of us that have to live with the cost and maintenance and repairs for these Aston Martins, uh, knowing a bit about this does help. So I want to give a huge thank you to ECPS for hosting me for that video. Uh, it was great to be able to spend some time with them, visit them, check out their shop. Uh, if you haven't done so already, make sure you check out their YouTube channel and website. And of course, I sell everything they have to offer on redpants.lol in my online shop. So please check that out as well because the sales from my online shop are what supports literally everything I do. This is my job. So uh, I appreciate every bit of those sales and I hope that I am able to help you guys out by sharing what I know with you. Anyway, that's the video. Hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. I do have that messed up lens, but all I want to do is swap around the brackets that hold those lighting uh, portions, those bezels in place, so that instead of them being pointed this way, they get pointed this one. I just realized it looks like I'm holding my chest, and now I feel a little creepy. Um, I'm gonna have to wash my hands and have a rather stiff drink after this, uh, and apologize to myself, because I feel like I've violated myself on camera, but that wouldn't be the first time, would it, Rich? Anyway, this is what happens when I don't have a drink while I'm filming. It's worse. <laughs>